Okay, so this is just going to be a quick take here. Um, <clears throat> one of my podcasts that I like to listen to, The Signal, it's an Australian thing. Um, right in the middle of this episode, I'll have a link to this uh, this particular one where I post. Uh, and uh, this particular one was talking about GDP, uh, it talked about Bhutan and their uh, happiness index, which I think is a good idea. Uh, but right here, about in the middle here, uh, let me see, not not there, but actually like uh, 4.50. So I'm going to play a couple of minutes of this just so that I can point out how I think it's wrong. All right, so we're right near there, right around uh, the 4.50 mark. They're going to start talking about GDP, and their guest that they have on the show says something that I find impossibly wrong. Grow the pie and then make sure that everyone gets a fair share of it. You've got to be very careful that you don't end up shrinking the whole pie. Pretty much every country around the world has this view that our GDP or gross domestic product should increase year on year. GDP is basically, and I'm simplifying a bit here, the total value of goods and services that an economy produces. We started using it as a way of measuring economies in the 1930s after the depression. So. Is it time for a change? It's a pretty big question to ask. And last week we got an email from one of our listeners, Chrissy. Thanks, Chrissy. Chrissy, you're good. She's wondering if we need to change this economic dogma of growth, if it can continue indefinitely when we live on this rock with finite resources. Yeah, so like, is growth always good? There are people who say that the economy doesn't need to grow. That is, we don't need to earn more in real terms, uh, taking account of inflation each year than we did the year before. This is Peter Martin. He's the economics editor of The Conversation. But I sort of think that's wrong. I, I have uh, affinity, I guess, with those who say jobs and growth. I'm close so to agreeing. We have a very clear plan for jobs and growth. Uh, jobs and growth focused on jobs and growth for all Australians. I'm focused on jobs and growth, like, can I tell you? Strong growth, more jobs. <clears throat> I just wanted to make sure you'd never forgot those words, Ruby. So thoughtful. I'm here to help. <laughs> Should we be so obsessed with it, though? Do we really need constant growth? People say it can't go on forever. They say that, uh, you know, yes, eventually the world will run out of resources. You, you, you <clears throat> can't uh, have a higher standard of living one year from the next. And they're completely wrong. The real thing that lifts our standard of living is not resources, not iron ore and what we put into things. In fact, we're using less iron ore to produce each like unit of point. GDP. The, uh, the things that we make way less. In fact, uh, um, you know, many of the things, you know, the devices that uh, you hold in your hands and carry around with you weigh hardly anything. It's the ingenuity that goes into them. And that's actually limitless. There's no reason why we can't That's continue to get better off in our standard of living. Uh, measured, it's true, a lot by services, uh, 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 a lot by cleverness. There's no reason why that can't go on forever. But that's, that's he's missed the point. It's, this is- So growth uh, is good? What? Okay, so, <clears throat> so this guy, he, he's talking in limitless terms, but it's not true. Okay, uh, what, what I strongly believe causes the GDP to change uh, from my own knowledge of economics and things that I've studied in, in uh, the Department of Geography at UB um, <clears throat> is population is a crucial driving force behind the GDP. Um, when when uh, it comes down to it, everything that the GDP is measuring is stuff that people want, okay? So if people want something, it gets manufactured. If it gets manufactured, it gets measured in the GDP. So uh, it's it's so obvious, it's, you know, once you, once you look at it, that if there's half as many people there's half as much product demand and there's half as much GDP. So it's the growth of population on the earth that drives the GDP numbers for, uh, for us worldwide. And it can be different in different countries. There's certain periods of time 
where countries are largely an exporter and their GDP can go up excessively. But uh, on balance, their GDP is going up because somebody else's country has their GDP going down because they're buying imports. So uh, as a whole, the I think the primary driving force between the change of GDP year over year is the amount of people in the market demanding goods and services. So it's people that's the most important factor. And no, uh, we, we don't, we conceivably do not have an unlimited growth potential for humans on the earth. Uh, I don't know if we're close to our limits. We're close to our limits as far as carbon uh, goes. The way we do things now, the way we uh, the way we produce energy in order to produce things that we want to live the way we want to live, that is so unsustainable with our current population, and our population is currently growing still. So no, it. It, growth can't go on forever, not the way we're doing it. So it's, it, I, I like his idea, the idea that ingenuity changes and people want stuff and you make more of it and GDP changes, but uh, it's, it's a clever idea, but no, it's wrong to think that things can go on forever. Um, I'm going to link a blog of mine <clears throat> where I do some graphing and talk about exponential curves uh, and growth rates of things. And uh, we as humans uh, have, have the, the ability to grow exponentially, which is dangerously fast. And the only thing that slows us down is when we hit limits on resources. Uh, but that's a terrible way to live. Uh, all it takes is one, one bad moment when you're living at your limit of your capacity of your current resources, uh, one bad moment to cause a catastrophe in population, and uh, we really don't want that. So, yeah, this is, it's silly to ever hear somebody think that you can go on growing forever. And even uh, like stock market and returns and things like that, that is also driven by a population growth model. Um, people normally invest, they expect a return, they expect a growth potential, they expect an interest that compounds uh, annually. The, uh, those are all formulas that are based in exponential growth. And it's, it just can't happen. Eventually, people are going to have to make up numbers in order to maintain exponential growth and eventually the house of cards falls. But the, there can be growth as long as the population grows and as long as resources keep up with us. But there is no such thing as unlimited growth. And never believe it when you hear that, that word about uh, living things. There's only theoretical unlimited things, like the end of the universe. That's, uh, you know, something that you can call unlimited, but mm, not when it comes to biological objects on this rock. So anyways, uh, listen to the whole story. Their show's generally pretty good, but uh, a while ago I was thinking about doing these little segments where I complain about what's crucially wrong when I hear somebody talk about finance and money and stocks. So this is my first hot take on those to come. And uh, that's it for